this is a project that uh, uh, has been granted to this uh, TIS, the sim based research grants in Hong, uh, by the RGC Hong Kong, the Research Grant Council of Hong Kong. I'm the, I, I am the uh, project coordinators, and uh, both uh, Professor Anna and the Professor Yu uh, are this, uh, instrument, uh, play an instrumental role in this, in this project, uh, serving as uh, the uh, co PI and co I of the projects. Uh, so this is a this is a five year project, uh, and the the main the, the major theme of the project is on financial technology stability and uh, inclusion. Okay, uh, so by the by the name you can see this is a this is a pretty uh, aggressive project and uh, try to address very important issues. Now I was I would argue that this is a, a particular the time uh, to start to kick kick off this this projects uh, because. Uh, we know that so if you look at uh, this is the evidence, uh, the, the data that put together by uh, 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 Harvard uh, Brown University and the 10 FinTech companies. So they, they build up an economic tracker of the real sector performance in US. So you can see that uh, during the COVID periods, the real economy has been severely affected, uh, you know, especially for the, uh, you can see the, the low income, the low income people and also the SMEs. So because of this, you can see that the people are talking about the inequality has increased. Um, and also this also shows the importance of financial inclusion, which means the providing financial services and the liquidity to the SMEs and to the households. Okay. Now, so in order to, uh, to, to, to do these ambitious projects, we actually uh, use this TIS platform uh, to build a very strong and multidisciplinary team. Uh, you can see uh, the team includes uh, our Hong Kong U team, uh, you know, uh, professors from business schools, computer science, and the law faculties, and also contains uh, uh, the experts from other local universities, including Chinese University Hong Kong and the Hong Kong UST and the Ningnan University. And also, like uh, we have uh, uh, important team members from mainland China, including. Uh, the Tsinghua University, which is the best university in, in, in China, uh, Peking University and the Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, and also there's, we have uh, important partners from overseas, leading overseas university, including Yale, NYU, Berkeley and Duke and other universities. So this is a, this is a big team. And I will show you why we need such a big team to, to, this, to do this project, okay? Now, this is, this is academic, this is academic uh, team. Uh, in order to, this, to, to, to do this project, we also uh, build up uh, the connections and the collaborations with industry partners, which including China Construction Bank, Alibaba Group, uh, Tencent, uh, the New Hope Financial and Financial, and uh, many others. Okay, so this, is, this will be a, a project that combines uh, the academic talents and also industry ex expertise uh, and uh, try to bring all the wisdom together to do this. Now, so specifically, there, there are three uh, things we want to do, okay? Now, the, the first one is that we want to develop a framework of uh, the dynamic credit risk assessments. Uh, for this one, we are, we are going to use uh, the FinTech data, which means the digital footprints, uh, including this high frequency, high dimensions, high coverage data to kind of convert uh, to do this uh, feature, ex feature extractions to convert the soft information to, into hard information, to build the dynamic credit risk models, and uh, to design a smart contract and to do the program evaluation of the of the impact. Okay, so this is the this is the the, the first project, and the second related project is that uh, uh, we, based on this micro analysis, we want to draw uh, macro implications of financial stabilities. Okay, we want to understand the transmission channels. We want to build a macro models that can monitor and follow the uh, systemic, systemic risk. Okay, so this is the second part. And the third part, which is equally important, is that we want to understand these implications, the, the risk and the returns, and also the trade-offs under the new kind of a regulatory framework. So we are, in particular, we're talking about the, the data protection, the privacy issues, and a competition policy, okay? So that's why it's, it's easy to see that that's why we need a team that come from uh, finance, computer science, law, data science, uh, and economics, okay? So that's why we need such a big team to, 
to do this ambitious, ambitious project. Uh, for the so I'm going to talk about this uh, talk 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 about this one by one, uh, you know, very briefly. Okay, for for the so for the for the first for the first part for the dynamic quite risk models, uh, you can see that the traditional quite risk model only build a high dimension online learner, right? So, but here in our framework, we'll build a, a series of a series of uh, high dimensional online learners. But the more important thing is on top of this high dimensional online learners, we will have a metal controller. This metal controller will do dynamic model selection or averaging based on the macro information, and we will do the hyperparameter optimizations. Okay, so so this this is so-called the dynamic uh, quite risk models. And the model will choose the specific or a combination of this uh, program learner, uh, the, the uh, online learners, uh, based on the microeconomic shock uh, or macroeconomic structural change. Okay, so this is the the, the first one I want to talk about. Uh, now, in order to capture this uh, macroeconomic shock or macro the, 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 the structural change, uh, we'll use a lot of uh, alternative data. The alternative data include mobile data, satellite night data, uh, pollution traffic, a lot of remote sensing data. Okay, that's why we are collaborating with Wuhan University, uh, which is the, 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 the leading institute in this remote sensing data collections. Okay. Now, the second for the second one, we're going to build a DSGE models, a dynamic stochastic general equilibrium model to draw the macro implication for, of, uh, of the financial stabilities. Okay? Specifically, we want to understand the risk transmission from uh, household firms to financial institution and the government. Okay? So we need, a, we need a DSGE model to characterize all these uh, transmission channels. And uh, through these collaborations, we can understand and monitor the, the, the financial stability better. Okay? So this is the second part. The third part, we're going to look into this issue through this uh, uh, the regulatory framework. Now, this is a very important because we know that, for example, there's a trade-off between privacy and efficiency. Okay. Now, according to our own research around the world, uh, more than 130 countries already adopt some kinds of uh, data protection law. Uh, and we know that uh, the, the, the EU had this uh, GDPR, which is the almost the most, arguably the most important change in data privacy regulation over the past two decades. So under this uh, privacy or data protection law, you know, how to achieve the same level of efficiency, this is a, this is a big issues, okay? Now, so the, the you know, the, the recent tech developments, you know, share some lights on this. So we're going to collaborate with the computer science department on this, uh, the federated learnings. And because this is seem to be the way, seem to be the way out. On the one hand, it can keep the privacy of the data. On the other hand, it can maintain the efficiency of the data analysis. Okay. And another challenge we are facing now, right now, is the competition policies. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that many of you have read the recent news that, uh, the especially the House Antitrust Report on Big Tech, uh, which was uh, announced like a couple of weeks ago. So a lot of this uh, big tech company are now facing this uh, uh, this competition policy or antitrust uh, uh, litigations. So uh, again, this is another trade-off: how to balance the equity and efficiency. And uh, you know, because many people are talking about if you divide the, the big tech company into small parts, you might lose the efficiency. So how to get around with these issues? Uh, whether we can again use the technology to help overcome this? Uh, this is another big thing we are going to, to look into. Okay, so again, I think this, I only have 10 minutes for sharing. So this is a very brief uh, overview about what we are going to do. Uh, we build a very strong team and uh, uh, that contains uh, not only the academic experts around the world, but also the industry practitioners. And uh, uh, through this Hong Kong U FinTech Week, I actually look forward very much to collaborating with you, uh, with, uh, you know, or the, the potential audience. If you find this topic interesting, please uh, do not hesitate to contact, uh, to contact us. Thank you very much.